Hey, what's up guys? Matt here coming to you from Laidlaw's Harley-Davidson. So today we're going to be taking out the new installment to Harley-Davidson's trike lineup, the Road Glide 3. So this is the first time we've seen the Road Glide applied to the trike chassis in the Harley-Davidson lineup. So kind of a cool new refreshed look to the trike lineup and something that I think is kind of long overdue. I think it's really cool that Harley-Davidson finally applied their one of their signature fairings to the trike. So we're going to take it out and give it a spin and I'm going to give you guys my thoughts about the trike and give you all the details on it. All right, so let me take you guys on a walk around the brand new 2023 model year Road Glide 3. And before we jump into that, I want to give you guys a brief history on what we've seen in modern years in terms of the trike and it's evolving over a little over a decade. So we first saw Harley Davidson build the modern trike platform back in 2009 is when we saw it launch for the first time. And Harley Davidson has been known for its trikes all throughout its history, really. The most notable three wheel vehicle Harley Davidson has made was called the Servi car, short for the service car. And this ran from 1932 to 1973. And these three-wheel Servi cars came about during the Great Depression when Harley-Davidson was trying to expand its product offering. And they were used primarily in the automotive industry. And the Servi car was designed to be towed behind a car to be delivered to a customer. When the repaired car was delivered back to the customer, they'd unhitch the Servi car and they were able to ride back to their repair garage. So a lot of these Servi cars came with a tow bar in the front so they could be towed behind the car that was just worked on but they were also used in world war ii and the survey car has been really popular with law enforcement agencies there's a lot of police survey cars out there my dad remembers the days when they were used as parking enforcement where the throttle was actually on the left hand grip and then with their right hand the parking monitor could mark tires with a piece of chalk so they could keep track of the cars and how long they had been there but then in 1973 harley davidson stopped making the survey car and i believe they didn't produce any factory three-wheel vehicles until the reintroduction of it in 2009 so the truck Glide form factor was very much like we see it today. It was basically an ultra limited with three wheels. So you had the full batwing fairing and the tour pack and the trunk in the back. And then a couple years later, I want to say in 2011 or so, they had the Street Glide trike. And that was a little bit more chopped down, slimmed down version of the trike. No tour pack. It adopted some more of that custom bagger esque looking style that the Street Glide brought to the touring family in 2006. And then the Street Glide trike only lasted for a couple years. I'm not sure if that was due to low sales volume or what really influenced the decision to scrap it after I want to say two or three years of the street glide trike and then in the 2015 model year they came out with the freewheeler and the freewheeler has run consistently since that 2015 model year when it was launched as a little bit more of a stripped down version of the trike when compared to the full-blown tri glide it's more of like what I would describe as like the road king trike there's no fairing up front the trunk in the rear like the door hatchback opens up vertically that's really the same tail end that we have now that's been applied to the road glide three it's a little bit more of like your racier sportier version as opposed to having that tailgate drop down on the tri glide that reveals the trunk in the back that is there partly because you have a tour pack on top that would otherwise block that door from opening up vertically Another significant milestone in the trike family that I think went unnoticed by the masses was in 2019, Harley Davidson had a major chassis upgrade that was a lot of the stuff like down underneath in the bones of the trike. And I'm gonna be covering that in just a minute. But now that we have the Road Glide 3, this is probably the most substantial and noteworthy addition to the trike product line that we've seen in probably about four years. We did see Harley Davidson launch a CVO trike in the 2020 model year, which is the first time we've ever seen a CVO version of the tri glide and that bike was made for three years from 2020 to 2022 that was a pretty rad product offering as well when i first caught wind that they were going to be putting a road glide fairing on the trike i immediately tried to picture it in my head and i thought to myself okay i really hope this doesn't look weird and now that i've seen it up close i've ridden it i've filmed it and i really looked at it from a lot of different angles the shark nose fairing on the three-wheeler is right at home and i feel like it looks extremely good in my eyes the road Road glide fairing that was first launched in the 15 model year. So the modern road glide shark nose fairing has a cool factor edge over the batwing fairing. And that's not me saying the batwing fairing isn't cool. I ride one myself. I like it. But something about the shark nose fairing, just the style I think speaks to a lot more of that custom world and a lot more of the younger generation as well. And in my eyes, this is a very welcome refresh to the trike platform. 
You know, one of the things that I did when I was preparing for this video is I really did some market research on just how many companies or offerings there are out there as far as three wheel options from major manufacturers, both motorcycle and car. And over the years, I've always thought of Honda as being one of the main competitors to Harley Davidson in the three wheel space. But the funny thing is, is Honda doesn't actually make a factory trike. I think pretty much all the three wheel Hondas you see out there are all conversion kits from third party companies. And so if I'm speaking of major motorcycle manufacturers and their three wheel offerings, there really aren't a ton out there. I think the biggest one in terms of volume when compared to Harley Davidson would be Can-Am and the Can-Am Spider line. However, the form factor there is quite a bit different because they have the two wheels in the front, one in the rear. So it's a two one trike as opposed to the one two trike that Harley Davidson makes, one wheel in the front, two wheels in the rear. Honestly, I haven't had a whole lot of seat time on the Can-Ams with the two one trikes, but in my personal opinion, I think the Harley Davidson style of the 1-2 trike is a lot more traditional, especially since it's the same wheel configuration we've seen from Harley-Davidson years and years ago. The two wheels in the front trike is a little bit more of a modern take on the three-wheel vehicle. And then Yamaha makes a bike called the Nikon, which is like a motorcycle with two wheels in the front. And I wouldn't really even describe this as a trike. This is kind of in a category of its own, and I've never ridden this, but honestly, I don't know who would buy this thing. And I'm not going to pass judgment, but I just really am honestly honestly curious like who who is this really built for who is this for and then another three wheel offering out there is the Polaris slingshot and I would say this is more closely related to a car than it is a motorcycle and I say that just in terms of the size of it and the seating position you're in like a car seating position you're not straddling a motor and I do have some seat time in the Polaris and just the overall experience of driving it keyword driving and not riding is just a lot more like a car than it is a motorcycle and then there's some scooters out there like I know Piaggio makes one that has two wheels in the front and one in the rear that has a knees together feet forward type of a seating position and these I would classify more as like an ease of use around town like European countries where space is at a premium and so the Harley Davidson Triglide is kind of in a class of its own just in terms of what they offer from the factory now once again like I've said there's plenty of aftermarket companies like Voyager kits and things like that that you can bolt on into existing motorcycles you know different makes and brands but to get something fully backed and supported by a major manufacturer with this form factor, the one, two wheel setup, this is kind of a unique beast to be honest. And then you apply the extra layer of a classic American cruiser with the air-cooled V-twin and the fit and finish that Harley-Davidson offers. There's really nothing else like it in the market that's offered by a major motorcycle manufacturer. And so I don't bring this up as saying like, oh, look at Harley, they're so great. They offer something that nobody else offers. I bring it up more as I just wonder genuinely, why aren't more brands doing this? Is it because there aren't enough buyers of this type of vehicle out there? Is the financial upside not worth the investment that it would require from a major motorcycle manufacturer to get into this market? I don't know, maybe I'm missing something. Let me know what your guys' thoughts are. One thing I think would be really cool if Harley Davidson did was create a trike for the Icons collection and model it after one of the old Servi cars. They could put one of those tow bars on the front and then do a collaboration with Ford Motor Company and get like a notorious Ford dealer, maybe in the Wisconsin, Milwaukee area and paint their name like the old school font in like XYZ Ford dealership service department or something like that. All right, so let's jump back into a walk around around this 2023 Road Glide 3. And then after that, we're gonna take it around for a cruise around town. I'm gonna be giving you guys my thoughts about just the way it rides and handles and all that good stuff. So here we've got the black, the vivid black with the black trim for 1100 bucks more. You can convert the chrome trim to the black trim on this bike. So kind of cool that Harley Davidson gives us the option of getting it in both the chrome or the black trim. On the freewheeler this year, you do not have that option. It comes in black only. But one of the things that really really stood out to me most about this bike outside of the fairing were the wheels on this thing. This is a brand new wheel design this year, which I think looks amazing. It pretty much completely transforms the overall appearance of the trike. So you've got these big 18 inch wheels in the rear and you got the large 19 inch wheel in the front. Definitely one feature that is more favored in the flashy and showy side of the spectrum, which like I mentioned before is where I would categorize this bike. If your preference is more geared towards style and that hot rod bagger look, this and the freewheeler are going to outweigh like the tri 
side. The Triglet is definitely the bike that you're going to be wanting to go to if you're looking for more of the utility, like the extra storage, the extra comfort, things like the extra wind deflection. The Triglet is definitely going to be the best for that. But the Rogue Glide 3 is definitely like a hot rod styled trike within that family. Now, the Rogue Glide 3 is powered by the 114 cubic inch Milwaukee 8. This is the regular version as opposed to the twin cooled version that we see on the full Triglide Ultra. You're putting out 90 horsepower that's at 4,750 RPM and you're doing 119 foot pounds of torque. And like I mentioned before, this tail end is going to be pretty much the same as we've seen on the freewheeler in the past. You've got that dual exhaust coming out the tail end with the classic Harley Davidson emblem in the lower right hand corner of the box there. And then you've got like chopped fender style in the rear. So you can see a lot of rubber in the tail end. It's almost like bobbed fenders on the Triglide here. One more thing to give it a little bit more of an aggressive look. The seat on here is another item to lend towards that sporty cool factor. You've got some decent detail on here with some perforation in the seat, but this is a little bit more of a firm, low profile seat, much like what you're going to find on like the Street Glide and Road Glide special. Not really like a long haul, go across country seat. And you can see with the black trim package, you get the blacked out front forks, the foot controls, the outer primary, you know, the rocker box covers, transmission cover, cam timer cover, all the exhaust is all blacked out, air cleaner cover. And you've got an emblem on the tank that I would describe as like a modern retro emblem on there. And the Road Glide fairing is mounted and performs and looks much like you would expect. It's a frame mounted fairing, much like any other Road Glide we've ever seen in the past. The steering spins independent of the fairing. The fairing functionally is pretty much identical to the Road Glides we've seen before. The 6.5 GTS system comes with all the goodies like Bluetooth, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto. You got communication functionality in there. If you want to throw the headset on, you can take phone calls on the bike and all that good stuff. It has the two speaker system on here. The speakers are in the fairing, so that's two less than what you'd find on like the Tri-Glide, which has the two speakers back there mounted underneath the tour pack. The windshield is smoked and chopped, kind of in line with the same custom bagger look that you're going to get on the two-wheel Road Glide counterpart. So in the rear trunk here, you've got two cubic feet of storage capacity. You can easily fit two full-face helmets in here along with a bunch of other stuff. It is quite a bit larger than like a King Tour Pack that you're going to see on like a Limited. And you've got the same standard six-gallon fuel tank that we see on all the other touring chassis bikes and all the other trikes. Harley shows the fuel economy at 43 miles to the gallon, which surprisingly enough isn't any different than what they claim on like the two wheel limiteds. This trike does weigh in a little less than 1200 pounds. So we're talking about almost 300 pounds heavier than like an ultra limited. Like I mentioned a few minutes ago, the 2019 model year was a big year technology wise for the trike family. Not very many people know this, but the RDRS, the reflex defensive rider system that came out in the 2020 model year was actually first applied to the trike family in 2019 however they do not use that same rdrs name on the trike it's all just a standard feature but the introduction of the imu the inertial measurement unit which basically detects when you're in a turn and uses that data in conjunction with the abs wheel bearing sensors to enhance things like traction control abs linked braking and drag torque slip control based on if you're in a turn or not so all that technology is standard on all the trikes as of the 19 model year they also upgraded the front brakes to brembo and they upgraded the shocks to a dual emulsion shock. The preload is adjustable by taking the seat off and you can flip up the preload adjuster here. And if you guys were ever curious about what was underneath the shell in the back of a trike, this is a good shot of the frame and the underworkings and the bone structure of the trike in the tail end. So the trike does have a lot of rider safety enhancements. Once again, ABS, that is cornering enhance, drag torque slip control, which is kind of the opposite of traction control. Maybe your wheels aren't spinning fast enough. Maybe due to rapid downshifting and deceleration, it will actually add a little bit of power to your wheel so as to gain traction again that's cornering enhanced traction control where if you're giving it too much power and your wheels are breaking loose traction control is going to reduce torque to the rear wheel so you once again gain traction it's also got a wheel lift mitigation where if you're taking a turn too quickly and one of your wheels begin to lift up off the ground it will sense that and again reduce torque to the rear wheel and it's also got linked braking as well so what that does is helps distribute evenly the braking effort between the front and the rear brake all right guys so let's take out this Road Glide 3 now for a spin around town and I'm going to be giving you all the details on how it rides and handles and I want to thank DJ Yella of NWA for allowing me to take out his Road Glide 3 and put some mileage on it. I definitely appreciate it and shout out to him.
run down the controls here. So on the Rogue Glide 3, you got this same ignition fob that's similar to all the touring chassis bikes. So one click there at one o'clock is gonna turn the ignition on. Clicking it over to three o'clock is gonna be accessory only. So one o'clock here, so that fires up your gauges and your infotainment system. So this is all touch screen, so you can obviously touch the screen, but when you're on the bike, most of the time you're gonna be using your hand controls here. So you've got your radio here, and you can source at the very top, so you got AM, FM, and then you've also got your, your media if you have a uh, device plugged into the USB down here. So this is a USB cord, much like the other Rogue Lights have, and the cubbies here. So this is some additional storage that the Rogue Lights have that the Batwing fairing does not have. So one small advantage to the Rogue Glide fairings. And then you've got your, your typical Rogue Glide gauges on here with your speedometer and your tachometer. You can cycle here with a trigger switch. A couple different options here in the digital display here. So you've got your odometer, trip A, trip B, remainder, that's how many miles you have before you run out of fuel. And then you've also got tire pressure monitoring here. So this is your front tire and your rear tire, the tire pressure. And so if you wanted to four o'clock this thing, You'd turn the bars to the left, throw it into the, so you're looking at a clock, you're looking at nine o'clock, push this down, put the key in and turn there. That's gonna lock your ignition and lock your fork. So if you're locking the bike, that's a good thing. You've also got the security fob as well, which is the same that we've seen on the touring bikes for a long time now. That's a proximity sensor. If you're more than about a foot away from the bike, the ignition won't fire up. You do have a parking brake on here as well. Push that down to set the parking brake. Release it. The bike does have reverse as well. I'll demo that real quick. Turn, turn on the ignition. Bike's in first gear. We put the hill shifter on this bike. The hill shifter does not come stock on the Road Glide 3 from the factory. So I'm gonna start this up here. So the bike's in neutral. I'm gonna hold down this R, this reverse button. It's gonna throw a yellow R up here on the screen. Then I'm gonna I'm gonna let off and then hold it down again. And that's gonna put me in reverse. Let that off. And then to throw it into drive, I would just pull on the clutch and just throw it into drive like normal. You've also got your traction control. Traction control is always on. If you hold this down, it will disable the traction control. By quick pressing it when the bike is on, it also puts you into rain mode where the traction control becomes a little bit more sensitive and the level of intervention is higher when, again, it's in rain mode. You can lock the trunk back here with a key. If it's unlocked, this will spin. And it just requires a little bit of a lift to open this up. Tons of trunk space in here. This is the fob, comes with two keys special trike model manual here and like i mentioned this bike uh, is equipped with the led turn signals these, these do not come stock so he put these on the front two turn signals and he also put on the smoked lenses in the rear you can't really tell because the lights are on right now but they are smoked So I want to give you guys a real broad overview of what to expect when you ride a trike if you haven't already ridden one and maybe you're thinking about getting one and you want to know you know how it compares to a two-wheel Harley-Davidson or maybe you're just getting into the Harley-Davidson world and you want to start with a three-wheeler. I've really come across people from both camps who want trikes for various reasons. So overall the tri-glides are very easy to ride. If you already have a basic understanding of how manual transmissions work, maybe you've driven a manual transmission car or maybe you've already driven a motorcycle that is a typical manual transmission motorcycle these things are very easy to ride if you've never worked a clutch and shifted gears then there's definitely a little bit of a learning curve there but overall the Harley Davidson trikes are in some ways extremely different than the two-wheelers and in other ways they are extremely much the same as riding the Harley Davidson two-wheelers so I'll start off with what's the same the overall riding feel and character and mannerisms of the engine and the controls it's all pretty much identical to any Harley Davidson you've ever ridden. So you can tell that yes, I am in fact 
definitely on a Harley Davidson while I'm riding this trike right now. The look of the bike, the mannerisms of the bike, the starting it, the shifting the gears, the touch and feel throughout the bike, the controls, the trunk, the operation of the infotainment system, the seating position, the ergonomics. It's all pretty much feels the same as riding any of the touring chassis motorcycles. Now the part that is extremely different. The actual handling of the bike is completely different, as most people would expect. On a two-wheeler, you're leaning and controlling a two-wheel vehicle compared to a three-wheel vehicle is completely different. I usually describe these trikes as having go-kart-like handling. On a two-wheel motorcycle, once you get above 10-15 miles an hour, it's pretty much all about leaning with a little bit of pressure and counter steering and things like that in the handlebars. With the trike, it's pretty much all steering. There's no leaning involved. Your feet go up on the floorboards. Your feet never come down at a stoplight, which is kind of a nice thing. This is the part where if you have never ridden a two-wheel motorcycle before, maybe you don't feel comfortable with handling a large cruiser that is a two-wheel motorcycle, then the trike might be a really good substitute for you because it pretty much eliminates all the need for the skill of being able to ride a motorcycle. As long as you know how to handle the clutch, shift the gears, and spin the throttle on the right-hand side, beyond that, it's pretty much just steering it like a go-kart or like an ATV or something like that. The faster you go and the tighter turn you need to make, the heavier the steering gets. I know in some circles and some conversations, people want to tell you that it's like a really brutal upper body workout to ride a trike. I disagree. It's not. I suppose if you're just really weak and maybe you're just like really out of shape and you're going down a tight switchback twisty mountain road, I suppose maybe it could get a little bit tiresome. But to the average rider, the trikes do not require some large amount of stamina to ride them. A couple frequently asked questions that I get all the time. People want to know if this bike has independent rear suspension. The answer is no, and I'll flash up what it looks like underneath the hood again. So these trikes are a straight axle design, and they have a right and left shock. Over the 12 or 13 years I've been riding these and talking about them, I've come to these conclusions on the pros and cons of straight axle versus independent rear suspension. Having independent rear suspension can result in a softer, cushier ride for you. But with the nicer, cushier ride, you're not going to have the go-kart-like handling that this trike has. Having the straight axle as well, like on the Harley Davidson trikes is more of a maintenance free setup as well so they have very sharp reactive handling we've had very few issues with these over the years they're pretty much bulletproof but if you're going in and out of driveways and if you're going like over heavy bumps and really rough roads you're gonna feel the bumps and the rough road a lot more than you would had you had independent rear suspension another common question I get a lot is people want to know if you have to have your motorcycle driver's license to be legal to ride a three-wheel trike and the answer in California is no no, you can ride a three-wheel trike with just your regular class C license, which is the equivalent of being able to drive a normal automobile. However, I think this is a rule that is different from state to state. So on that question, do you have to have a motorcycle license to ride a trike? I would say check with your local DMV if you live outside of California. If you live in California, no, you do not need it. Speaking of laws in California and unique laws in California, lane splitting is always a topic that gets brought up quite a bit. And people want to know if lane splitting is legal on a trike. And honestly, I don't know the answer to that question. If you guys know if lane splitting is legal on a trike in California, I would love to hear it from you. I think it's kind of a gray area to be honest. If I were to guess I would say no. And for those of you outside of California, yes lane splitting on a two wheel motorcycle is legal in California. I've been doing this YouTube thing for a long time and it seems like I still get comments people yelling at me and want to be the safety patrol and tell me what I'm doing is dangerous and inconsiderate. Anyways, that's a different topic. But honestly, me personally, I don't know if I'd even really try to lane split on a trike. I've heard of people and seen people People lane splitting on trikes before and they're just they're wide vehicles I mean you are a lot wider than a two-wheel motorcycle and so fitting in between traffic it's just, just super sketchy and speaking on the width of a trike I think that's one of the things that people have to get used to immediately when they convert from a two-wheel motorcycle into a trike I've seen many times and I've heard many horror stories of people clipping fenders because they think they're narrower than they really are I've seen people take out signs I've seen people hit walls in their garage all kinds of stuff on a trike because they think they're still on a motorcycle and they're not used to the dimensions so that is something that you mentally have to get used to and you have to get like an intuitive feel for where your boundaries are out on a trike so going into my first test ride of the Rogue Glide 3 I knew about 70 75 percent of the bike was going to be identical to trikes I've ridden before but the major thing that I wanted to really feel and to take note of and pay close attention to when I was riding this trike was the fairing obviously and I like to experience fairings out at high speeds out on the high 
highway so we took it out on the freeway here and we were doing about 75 miles an hour and I set the cruise control the bike does have electronic cruise control just like the other touring bikes by the way and this thing tracked amazingly these trikes have come a long way since the 2009 model year when they were first launched all the tri glides have a steering stabilizer on the front just by nature of having two wheels in the rear and one in the front any vehicle having that wheel configuration is going to have a tendency of that front wheel to want to dance around a little bit but I didn't feel that at all on the Rogue Glide 3. This thing was dialed, super planted, and in terms of the wind factor and wind deflection and the wind debuffeting and all that stuff we like to talk about with fairings out on the freeway. You guys ready? Drum roll. It's exactly the same as the two-wheel road glide. Seriously, I felt like I was sitting on a two-wheel road glide, just the, the wind and it, just the way it felt and everything. And that probably shouldn't be any type of surprise to me because I think just the dimensions, the relationship between where the fairing is compared to where the rider sits. I mean, I think everything's pretty much the same. At least it felt the same. I don't know why it would be anything different. I don't know if I was expecting something different, but the road glide fairing is a solid fairing. If you feel like you're getting a little bit too much headwind, Wind, then my first piece of advice is to go to a little bit taller windshield. It's a pretty quick, easy, and inexpensive solution, and it's going to fix any headwind problem 90% of the time. Let's take a look at all the color options we have on the Rogue Glide 3's debut model year. So first off, we got the vivid black here, and again, you can get that with the black trim or the chrome trim. The black trim will set you back 1100 bucks, like I mentioned earlier. The second color here is the gray haze. This adds $900 to the MSRP if you want the gray haze. And again, you get the gray haze and both the chrome, or you can go for the black as well. I really wish they would have offered the black trim with the gray haze on some of the touring chassis bikes. You can only get the chrome trim on like the Rogue Glide and the Street Glide. I was a little bit disappointed by that. But on the Rogue Glide 3, you can get the black trim on the gray haze, which I think looks really good. Good. And then the third and final color is going to be the bright billiard blue. This is another one of the new colors for this model year. And you can get that with the black trim as well, of course, here. So MSRP on this bike, you're looking at a base MSRP of $32,999. And if you add one of the two colors, the gray haze or the bright billiard blue, you're 900 bucks. And then if you add the optional black trim on the engine, you're looking at another $1,100. So the bright billiard blue or the gray haze, you're adding $2,000 to MSRP. A couple of other costs associated with getting a tri-glide the freight is going to be more than like your standard touring bike on the touring chassis bikes you're looking at 850 but the tri-glides are a thousand three hundred fifty dollars surcharge is a little bit more too at twelve hundred dollars for the surcharge you get your same two hundred dollars emissions so if you compare that to the freewheeler we can see here the freewheeler is only offered in a black trim this year You've got three colors, vivid black, white sand pearl, and then bright billiard blue and billiard gray two-tone. This is my favorite two-tone this year, by the way. This looks really good. But you do not have the option of getting it in the chrome. What do you guys think about that? You guys prefer if this bike came in the chrome? I personally like black better, but again, that's just a preference. And you're $29,999 on the freewheeler. So you're only about $3,000 more if you want the Road Glide 3. However, once again, if you want the Road Glide 3 to match the black finishes of the freewheeler, you're now looking at $1,100. So you're looking at a little over $4,000 more for the Road Glide 3 if you're going for the black trim option. <laughs> Initial thoughts, Andrew. What'd you think of the Rogue Glide 3, man? Uh, different. Uh, it is, it's definitely different. I, you know, so used to the two wheels and, you know, being able to balance and maneuver and everything. Steering is all, you know, with your body here. It's, it's more with your upper body and kind of, I don't know, it's a, if I were to put it in a, like, experience, it'd be like riding a quad, if that. Yeah. Um, I agree. But on the highway, it's just, it's planted. You know, it's, you kind of just do a little bit of F, you know, a little bit of input and the, it, it kind of goes where you want it to go. Uh, lower speeds around town and like lower speed bumps, when you hit something, it kind of, you know, you feel it in the in the handlebars and everything, but totally. it's, it's definitely something to get used to. And um, 
it, it, it's different, but uh, as soon as you're on it, you get used to it. You ride it for a few months. Uh, it's like nothing. I mean, on the highway, especially with this fairing, you can just, just gob up a monster amount of miles on this thing. How much saddle time do you have on a trike to begin with? Um, zero prior to this, so I'd say about eight miles. <laughs> <laughs> really? You ever ridden trike so far? Yeah, I've ridden them here around the, around the shop. Okay. Um, so and you, then, you were perfect for this, yeah. this ride thing. I mean, the only thing closest to the trike was the uh, sidecar that we we picked up. Uh, but yeah, I mean, this I've ridden around in the shop. It's different. And on the highway, it was the first time I got on the highway. And it just feels stable, man. It's just, it tracks super straight. Now, uh, the difference between the freewheeler and the Road Glide 3 uh, with the fairings and everything, like, what was your impression with the short amount of time we rode on them? I, I, I'm biased to the fairing. I like having wind protection uh, on the highway. Um, the steering and everything, characteristics, everything felt the same. Uh, yeah. Throttle input, the power, everything is, is very similar. When we're riding around the streets here and we hit a couple of bumps and the crafts in the railroad, that's when you really you feel the, the the bars jerking kind of back and forth when your rear end is is um, getting off camber a little bit. It's just at lower speeds you feel it in the in the handlebars, but on the highway, like I said, the thing just it just tracks super straight and stable. So. Now, for the guy that has been riding two wheel Harley's his entire life, and he needs to go to this for whatever reason, or maybe someone has this bike in addition to a two wheeler. Do you still feel like you get the Harley experience on this bike? Oh, absolutely. Like, so you feel like you're on a Harley Davidson? Absolutely. You still feel the vibrations, the the power, the sound, everything. The feel is 99.9% .9 the same. It's just one extra wheel. It's a little, little bit of adjustment. And, and I'm glad that Harley Davidson keeps making these uh, because the guy who is 70 years old that would normally not ride, um, a bike because of his balance and he now he requires a cane and stuff like that and not to say this bike's strictly for the older crowd it just it, it opens up the market to those type of people who couldn't ride a big two-wheel you know ultra limited and it allows them to get on this bike whether it is a free wheel or the road glide 3 or the tri glide uh, it, it opens that door for them and enables them to to be out there and, and enjoy life still you know at that older age and where in places where they couldn't um, I think this new Rogue Glide 3, the styling on this thing is stellar. It's odd, absolutely, they knocked it out of the park. Yeah, the um, wheels and everything. Yeah, the wheels are so nice on it. It's just, you know, it, it attracts a different crowd, you know, especially with out the tour pack on the back and that slim look in the back with that Road Glide um, front fairing and the wheels. It's just, it's a good looking bike. Final question. Uh... What do you think about trading this in for your Ultra Limited? Not just yet. I still like the two wheel. <laughs> I still like the two wheel feel a little bit Not more. Not right there yet? Yeah, no, I like the, the, the lane, being able to lane split. And that's another thing too, is when you're on this thing and you're coming from two wheels, you forget you have two more wheels behind you. Um, when you're sitting on the cockpit of this thing, you feel like you're on a bike until you turn or you clip a curb or something like that. So you just kind of have to keep reminding yourself that you're on a trike. Because um, when you sit on this thing and you're riding it, and you, you kind of forget it, as weird yeah. as it might sound. Yeah, right on, man, thanks. Yep. So I think Andrew and I are in agreement that the Road Glide 3 is a welcome addition to the trike family. And hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Hopefully you got a little bit of knowledge and a little bit of excitement about this new model in Harley Davidson's lineup. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to give us a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you can see all of our future content we come out with. And if you guys are looking for a new or used Harley Davidson in Southern California, make sure you check us out at Laidlaw's Harley Davidson, LA County's oldest, largest, and finest Harley Davidson leadership. Check us out at laidlawsharley.com. Thanks a lot for watching guys. We'll see you on the next one. Later.